I've already created a Microsoft form, and that form is just a simple contact us form. So, and the contact us form, again, this is just a test form. So it's, it's one of those things that you can configure on the tenant or, um, you know, we've gone through uh, and integrated certain things like job forms in the past or even custom forms that, that uh, customers have on their sites. But this gives us the ability to test this and show the, um, the triggers that can happen. Um, I can actually take and uh, utilize every single response that I get from this contact form as it's submitted. So if I come back over to my administrator login, And I'm going to go to my solution that I have been operating under. So as you can see here, I have a contact us form submission. Named it, we're going to do a contact us, we're going to do a form submission. And um, right now I have it turned off. So and I did that for demonstration purposes. So if we were gonna go in and, and you know submit one, it wouldn't fire off and it wouldn't create that lead. I'll turn it on. And I'm gonna go in and edit and just kind of demo and, and walk through it really briefly here. But so in a Microsoft form, we get we were able to start up a trigger, and that trigger says when a when a new response is submitted. It gives us the ability to select the contact us form that we've created. And then um, the information that we get available from this trigger is not the entire body or not, uh, not every field that comes with the form. So in one way or another, I have to actually get the response. And so this is just allowing us to trigger the flow and it gives us the submission ID or the response ID. So if we come down here and we look at the information that's available from the previous one, like it was showing before, the expression editor, um, the dynamic content tab here gives us available information from the previous blocks. So response ID is something that uh, is available from that, res uh, from that submission. I can pull that using the get response details action. And one thing that I like to do is I like to use variables um, and again, you know, using using the proper naming scheme, um, we would come in here and we would type in initialize service requested variable. So from here, I, I look at this and I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I've I've got a bunch of information available from this response, and here's all the fields that I've generated from that form. So if I look at the form, I've got first name, last name, phone number, all the way down through, and then one of the pieces I'm really interested in is what services are you interested in? I'm, I'm interested in Power Automate, Virtual Agent, Power, Power App, SharePoint. Um, I will have a field that is dedicated to that, uh, to that answer or to the answer to that question on that form. And then I can start to utilize certain blocks for creating a, a lead record based on that uh, based on that uh, that lead intake form. So as I'm coming down here, I will start to I'll populate a phone number. I can even and then I'll populate first name, last name, organization, email address. Um, so all of these things. And I, I think in in one way, let's just go submit one really quick and see what capitals they kill me every time phone number I don't have any questions or comments, but I want to learn more about Power Automate. I'll submit the form. Thank you for your response. And so again, a couple things that are going to tie, kind of tie off of each other here. You'll start to see that it literally just ran 
because I got a, uh, I had a submission on the form. And you can see that as the form was submitted, this is these are the details that I typed in. As you drill down into the run that happened, um, as I as I typed in the, or as I initialized the variable, then you can also see how I utilize that information um, on that create a new record. And again, um, keeping in mind that naming is very very important here. But so not only did I create the lead, and I can show you that here. So we now have Michael Honeycutt 2. I'm interested in service. I'm an architect, I typed in that information. And um, so one of the other things that now happened is now that we created the lead in here, that process piggybacked off of uh, submitting that form. So now that I've, now that I've automated creating that, that lead from that form, I also have the flow that goes in and, and emails the sales user that the lead was created. So if I come back to Michael Honeycutt, I just created a new lead from that intake form. So I've got two processes so far that have automated one, um, that have automated the creation of a lead and then the, and the notification that that lead was created to that salesperson. So in the essence of time here, I'm gonna try to dive in really quick on the advanced one just to kind of show you what, what happens. But um, a lot of times what will happen is you can create uh, ancillary processes that are a bit more complex. And sometimes um, it, they require the use of expressions. And expressions are where it starts to get a little tricky. But um, if you look at this particular lead, the advanced topic that I was gonna go over today and kind of dive in a little bit deeper was, um, well, and actually that one wasn't enabled. So that's a good, <laughs> good lead in. 